Mr. President, I, I, th I think I'm like you in one respect. Uh, you know, I, I don't hate anybody. And um, I try to look for grace everywhere I can find it. I, I've always believed there's always something to be thankful for. Um, and, I, and I came today to, to, uh, to uh, thank the, the, the Biden administration, but also to, uh, but also to uh, ask for its help. First, I, I want to thank the president for encouraging everybody to take the vaccine. I, I don't think uh, we have order, Mr. President. Um, I, I don't think anybody should be required to take the vaccine, and I'm not saying President Biden does, uh, but but he and his team have uh, have been very aggressive in in. Uh, in encouraging Americans to take the vaccine, and I think that's the proper approach. Um, do you have polio, Mr. President? I know you don't. I don't either. Thank you, science. Uh, the, the vaccine, I think, works. And, and once again, we're not telling anybody they have to take it. But I wish people would stop and reflect on it and weigh the pros and the cons, and I think they'll see the pros outweigh the cons. And I want to thank President Biden for, um, for his efforts in that regard. He, here's my, uh, my criticism. President Biden, at the worst possible time, is about to raise the uh, insurance premiums for every flood insurance policyholder in America, or almost all of them. So much for not hurting the middle class so much for not taxing the working people. As you know, Mr. President, uh, the flood, National Flood Insurance Program, which is administered by FEMA, began in 1968. Many people don't know this, but if we own a home and we have homeowner's insurance, our homeowner's insurance doesn't cover flooding. And if we do want flood coverage and we call our agent and ask us to place our flood coverage with a private company, they're very difficult to find. Almost no private companies offer flood insurance. So in 1968, the United States Congress decided to, uh, to, to form the National Flood Insurance Program and have FEMA administer it. Um, we insure through our National Flood Insurance Program, which once again is the almost exclusive source of flood insurance for the American people. We insure about 5 million people. Uh, about uh, 500,000 of those people are in my state, Louisiana. But we're not alone. I'm sure we have people in Colorado. I know we have people in New Jersey and New York, in most of the coastal states, and in many of the inland states. Who, uh, who have flood insurance. Now, FEMA has decided to implement a new program called Risk Rating 2.0. They always come up with a fancy name when they're going to screw you. Risk Rating 2.0. And if you ask FEMA about it, you say, well, what does this do, FEMA? Well, they try not to answer your question first. And they dodge and they bob and they weave, but if you pin them down and read their, their literature, they'll say, well, with risk rating 2.0, we're no longer going to assess premiums on the basis of an area. We're going to look at every specific home and assess its risk and assign a premium. And we're also going to consider the future. Uh, climate change, what things are going to be like 15, 20, 30 years from now. And I, don't, I didn't come to debate climate change, Mr. President. I'll save that for another day. I don't, there's a lot not to debate about it. There's a lot we agree about it. But this is coming from so-called experts. They're going to be able to predict things 30, 40, 50, 100 years from now when they can't tell us, tell us if it's going to rain on Friday. 
Now, this, this is all a very clever way to raise everybody's premiums. As best I can tell, about 80% of the people in my state who have to have flood insurance are going to see their rates go up. And they're, they're probably, FEMA's probably going to start by doing a little bit the first year. And they're going to say, see, we, we told you that wasn't going to hurt. But then they're going to do it the second year and the third year and the fourth year and the fifth year and the sixth year. And so, some of FEMA's minions who are advocating this say, well, Kennedy, uh, it's not right for the American people to be subsidizing wealthy uh, people who have two or three homes and one of which is on the beach. I agree with that. But that's not my people. That's not my people. My people who have flood insurance get up every day, go to work, obey the law, pay their taxes, try to do the right thing by their kids. They try to save a little money for retirement, and their biggest financial asset is their home. And through through risk rating 2.0, or what other clever name they call it, when they start raising premiums, a lot of my people can't afford it, and it's going to impact the value of their home. They're going to lose equity in their most valuable asset, and they're not going to be able to sell it. And you don't have to be Einstein's cousin to figure this out. FEMA knows what it's doing. Now, you would think this is the most dramatic transformation of, uh, and change to the National Flood Insurance Program since 1968. You would think that Congress would have something to do with it, Mr. President. Wrong. FEMA's doing this on their own. The, the first increases for new policyholders are going to take effect in October. For everybody else, in April of 2022. And, and, and you go to FEMA and you say, can we talk about this? No. Read our, read our pamphlet. They haven't had any public hearings. They haven't allowed the public to comment. Uh, they hired a, a very expensive consultant. They love expensive consultants at FEMA. The more expensive, the better. The more expensive the lawyers are, the better. They've hired a consultant to try to cover their tracks on how, what they're doing this. This doing here. This is just a flat-out rate increase. Insurance companies help FEMA administer the program. FEMA has told, we found out, the insurance companies, we can't tell you about the program, the new program, unless you sign a non-disclosure agreement because we don't want you to tell anybody. I mean, President Biden's FEMA is just going to drop this on us. And it's not just Louisiana. Now, and look, look, this does involve Louisiana. I mean, last year, my people, we, we got hit by two major storms. We got hit, by, like a lot of states, by an ice storm. Um, we, we, right now, South Louisiana, a big portion of it's underwater. We just got hit between, with between 8 and 20 inches of rain. And it, it, we have people who are flooding who are not even near a body of water. And I promise you, Mr. President, if you get 8 to 20 inches of rain in a short period of time, you're going to flood. I don't care if you're in the desert. I don't care if you're on Pikes Peak. You're going to flood. The water's got to go somewhere. So, yes, this impacts Louisiana. But you know what else it impacts? Uh, New York, New Jersey, they're going to get devastated. Uh, Chairman Sherrod Brown, chairman of our banking committee, very generously um, uh, held a hearing the other day on risk rating 2.0. Uh, we had some really smart people come testify about it. Of course, FEMA wasn't there. You can't find FEMA with the search party. You can't find FEMA with Google. They're nowhere to be found. They don't want to answer questions. But we had a, 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 a very intelligent uh, impressive lady from New York, I'm sorry I've forgotten her name, who testified el very eloquently about how this, th this rating increase across the board, willy-nilly, arbitrary, capricious, we don't have any input, is going to devastate New York. And, and I'm just very disappointed, Mr. President. And I'm, I'm asking President Biden today to pick up the telephone and call his new FEMA director and say, slow down here. Uh, at a minimum, don't treat the American people like morons. 
sit down and talk to them and explain what you're proposing to do and why you're doing it and let them have input. And the second thing I wish the president would do is pick up the phone and call his FEMA director and say, would you please consult Congress and talk to Congress about it and let Congress have a little input? Because last time I checked, there are three branches of government. And this is unilateral action by one federal agency. Um, this is serious stuff, Mr. President. This is going to impact a lot of people. This, I've said this before, and I don't mean to overuse it. I try to save it for really serious situations. But this is ser as serious as four heart attacks and a stroke. And it's going to happen out of the blue come October. And I would just like to, uh, to ask President Biden to, to consider um, asking his FEMA director to, uh, to please slow down and let us think this through.